Hello, this is Bob Joyner, and this is part two of the Warden TC2000 Conditional Colored Candles video. So I've done two videos already before this. If you've missed those, there'll be links in the chat box below this video. Uh, but this is part two. In the uh, description box below this video, there's also a link so that you, if you're not currently using TC2000, I am an affiliate for TC2000 because I've been using the software, the charting software, for over a decade now every day. So there's a link, a free download that you can get. There's also a $25 coupon if you decide to sign up that's available to you there. And uh, before we can create a more dynamic system of conditional colored candles which is what I promised you in the last video then we need to have a basic strategy in place and that strategy needs to include at least a baseline for determining trend and distinguishers for determining momentum you can add more to it than that but those are the basic layers that you would need for any kind of a strategy set up and for doing layered condition candles all right so let's go ahead and jump in there so in the last video, we talked about how to create a conditional colored candle with TC2000. I'm not going to repeat all that information, but there's a link in the uh, description box below this video where you can go and check that out if you want to. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use those conditional colored candles in a variety of ways. The first way is by actually plotting your strategy by color on the chart so that you don't have to look at half a dozen indicators when you're trying to decide uh, if a chart and a stock or an equity whatever meets your criteria. So in order to do that, that assumes that you have a strategy that you can plot, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a simple strategy and then I'm going to show you how to plot it. So the simple strategy always involves at least two things. One is a baseline of where do you delineate what is a bull from a bear. Now that can be a certain tipping point in the chart. That can be a EMA crossover. It can be a variety of things. But it's a, a cutting off point where you say there's a high probability if this happens, then that happens. right? So we're going to use a pretty standard uh, EMA ribbon for that to determine trend. And then on top of the trend, what we want to do is we want to add another indicator, at least one, that helps us distinguish within that trend high and low points for entries and exits. And we want to measure momentum. So we want to measure trend with one indicator, and we want to measure momentum with another indicator. So the two that I've chosen to measure trend what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and just create a simple uh, EMA ribbon using the 20 and the 50 EMA. So I'm going to go up here to this green button and I'm going to add moving averages to price. I'm going to add another one here. Both of those are exponential moving averages that I've simply added to price. Okay, the first one I'm going to put 20 period. We're going to leave that yellow and the next one we're going to leave at 50 and color it blue. And so that shows us on the chart we have the 20 EMA which is below the 50 EMA which is obviously a bearish signal and on the Euro US dollar 30 minute chart is what we're looking at here. And now those colors are green currently because that's the default if we go up here to edit the price We'll see that the plot color is green. I'm going to change that to white as our basis. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is I need to create the basic color that's going to determine this basic trend. So for example, if the EMA of 20, I'm going to create a condition here. If the EMA of 20 is less than or below the exponential moving of average, if you can see that here below the exponential moving of 50. Okay, and I'm going to save that and I'm going to call that 20 EMA less than 50 EMA. And move that up just so you can see. So I've just typed in that condition so I can save it. And important reminder, Every time you create a new condition or a new strategy, be sure you write it down in your journal or notepad or something because you're probably going to end up testing a lot of different things 
and you want to have a record of what you've done. Now while I'm still, still in the same window, I can go ahead and say another condition that I want to create is the exponential moving of 20 is above the exponential moving average of 50. So that's right down here. And I'm going to save that as well. And say 20. Move that up so you can see it. 20 EMA is greater than the 50 EMA. All right, so I've saved those two conditions, right? Now what I want to do is I want to go over to price. There are different ways of doing this. I'm just showing you a simple process that I use. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to edit price. Now, after you've created some conditions, the you know TC2000 may pause about 10 or 15 seconds, so just be patient with it as it creates that condition. And so now I'm going to go up and edit this price. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and color bars, you'll see, I'm going to add a color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pink color, just a light pink color to distinguish these candles. And I'm going to add that EMA 20. I can go up here and search my conditions and say 20 EMA is less than the 50 EMA and it pops up the top here. I'm going to simply press OK and that's going to plot that for me. And now I'm going to add the color of light green. Right, I'm going to add the condition that I also created the 20 EMA is greater than the 50 EMA. Right in there. Click OK. And so now I've got two basic colors on my chart, right? I've got the light pink color when 20 is below the 50 and I've got a light green color when the 20 is above the 50 and of course that's going to vary depending on what the trend is and what equity or stock or whatever I'm looking at at the time right but it's going to reflect just exactly what I said right so so far so good so now I'm going to add another in indicator. In this case, I'm going to choose the Fisher Transform. And the Fisher Transform is there. And I'm going to leave it there, the default setting. But I'm going to add something to this. I'm going to add a plot. So I'm going to add an exponential moving average of 5. And that's an exponential moving average 5 of the Fisher transform. So it's kind of like a subplot there. So I'm going to color that blue and change it to 5. Right, so 5 EMA, exponential moving average of the Fisher transform. Click OK. And that gives me this. Okay. Now, if I look at that just for a second, what I see is when does the Fisher transform in this case inform me? of high momentum situations or non momentum situations so when price consolidates overall the general rule is Fisher transform will move above its 5 EMA that does not mean it's a bull it does not mean it's a buy it just means that the end of that strong period of momentum going down has ended and so you could be out of the trade during that point and then wait for it to cross back below the 5 EMA again, which it does right there. Okay, so how do we plot that? So we need to create conditions again. So the first condition I want to create is the Fisher transform. Create a condition. And I want to say the Fisher transform is below the exponential moving of 5. Okay, and I need to save that condition. And I'm going to say Fisher transform is less than 5 EMA. Alright, and I'm saving that. And then while I'm here, I can also say Fisher transform is above exponential moving of 5 
and save that as well. It's now I've created two more conditions. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go back up here and give TC2000 TC second to build that condition. Click on it and edit. Now what I want to do, and I can break, you know, expand this box out so I can see what I'm doing better here. I've got these two basic colors based on the 2050 EMA. So I want to add a color now. Okay, and the color I want to add now is a little bit darker red color. And I want to add two conditions in this time. First, I want to add back the condition that I did before, which was the 20 EMA is less than the 50 EMA, which I already had. But now you see this little plus sign right in here. So I'm going to add now the one I just created about the Fisher transform. Fisher transform is less than the 5 EMA. And I'm going to add that to it. So now I have two conditions for a darker red color. And click OK. And again, I'm going to click OK. And you'll see that the colors haven't really changed, right? So what's up with that? I created a red color, and it's obviously that should be red, right? So you have to go back up here, edit the price again, and you have to order. So the darker the color, you want that to be on top, all right? So we have to use this little area to increase the priority because that's the most important thing. And that gives me more of a layer to where I have dark red up at the top. And then I have the lower qualification of just the EMA 20 below the 50 as a still my light red color and then if it converts to 20 by 50 then it's a green now I can also add another color and add a dark green to this one and I'm going to add the condition of the 20 EMA greater than the 50 EMA and tack on the other condition related to the Fisher transform, which is Fisher transform is greater than the 5 EMA, which is there. And I have that plotted as green, darker green, and click OK. And now I've got two different colors here, right? I've got two different shades of red. I've got two different shades of green based on the carotid that I just created. Now see how that looks. So if we look at it this way, what's happening is that we have these darker red colors as momentum is going down. We want to make sure we're short during that period. When it comes back to pink, we want to use partial exits, stops to control our risk. And then when we come back into strong momentum, we want to be short again. And again, partial exits, movable stops, and it goes like that, as you can see. Now, you're going to have chop in any kind of system, in any kind of equity, you're going to have chop, right? But you can see that what that does, it kind of delineates for us uh, those high momentum parts. And actually, these pink, once you understand the system, these pink areas where it hasn't quite become green yet, that those are actually low risk short entries. Now, let's go back and see if our dark green momentum is taking and what we see is all these green are the same right so what we need to do is go back up in here and edit the plot and I'm going to put green dark green on top of the light green to make it a priority over that and so what happens is as you come back to when the euro US dollar was more strong then you can see how it transforms from that light green and then when we have 20 above the 50 and we have Fisher Transform moving above its 5 EMA, it becomes a darker green, right? And that's the way it's going to move, all right? So what that does is it allows us 
to get rid of the Fisher transform. It allows us to get rid of the 20 and the 50 EMAs and to where I can just look at price now and learn how to trade just the colors that are on my chart. So that's the basic idea between creating various colors to represent different things. Now within within these colors you know I've only created two gradations of red and two gradations of green and I'm not going to expand on that but just to give you some ideas you could create a whole bunch of different colors and when you add a color in here you can go in here and create the color you can actually choose any of these colors you can choose a web color you can choose an RGB color if you know the exact numbers and you can go back and you can go into here and plot it this way as well so you've got a lot of options there for creating colors within the system you can go in there and create all sorts of things for example on this one you might want to say well let's go ahead and add the Fisher transform back in for a second and just show you and we added a plot of an EMA5 so let's get that back up real quick so one of the other things that you'll notice about this plot is that one of the more bearish things occurs when you have a, a Fisher transform crossing below its 5 EMA while both are below the zero line this zero line is right in here and you can go in here and edit that you can go back in here to the Fisher transform and you can create a horizontal line you can see that on the chart and I can create that and let's just say I want to color that blue or I want to add lines I can do all sorts of things but for example here if we have the Fisher transform while it's already below the zero line crossing below its 5 EMA then that is more bearish tends to be more bearish momentum than if it crosses while it's above zero same is true on the opposite side if that cross up occurs for example here while both lines are also already above the zero line then that could be a way to distinguish further and have an even darker candles up in there to show you even more higher momentum now that we've created some conditional colored candles and created a strategy on the charts there's a lot of things you can do so I'm just going to mention some things briefly to you but most important the first thing is you want to go down to the bottom of the chart and you want to go ahead and uh, save right click and save that tab so there's a couple things you can do with it after you've saved the tab you also want to save the chart so for example I'm going to name this chart um, the CCC 5020 okay and what that means is that I can go in here and I can now click on charts and you can bring up the 50 chart that you've created and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and just put this over here and I'm going to leave this blue symbol link there and then I'm going to go up here to the charts and I'm going to find CCC 5020 again and pop it in there and this time I'm going to make this red and just kind of bring these charts down side by side here and now what I can do is I've got the euro US dollar here I've got the spy over here right uh, but I can actually change that and I can let's say make that the US CAD so for example I can use this layout that I've created for trading multiple things but one of the things I can do also is just to go ahead and put two different forex pairs side by side that tend to move a little bit in opposite directions and that can help me see opportunities so for example when we had uh, you know light green here on the US CAD we also had a light pink on the euro US dollar here on the 18th and then we had a pretty big move after that and you can see obviously which side of both of those trades you should be in based on comparisons so beyond comparisons the other thing you can do is you can go in here and you could change this and let's say I want to use a four hour chart okay and I want to make this the euro US dollar on this side and that way I can see contextually 
what my four hour chart is telling me and then I can see what my 30 minute chart is and that kind of helps me again to find exactly where those high momentum parts are if we go back to this period back when the Fed made its announcements and the US dollar moved quickly up we can drag it back over into here and you've got these you know dark red candles on the four hour and on the 30 minute chart so you tell me if you see you know four hour candles and 30 minute candles that are both telling you these are high trend shorts high momentum shorts and you take that all the way down into here obviously you've got a pretty big move right so you can use contextual charts use the same setup or create a different setup to create a context on the left for your chart on the right so you can do comparisons you can do context the other thing i would mention to you is as you get comfortable using the conditional colored candles those dark colors if you've got momentum figured cor correctly then as you see those dark momentum candles then uh, you know that price is probably at an extreme so I'll flip over and I'll show you an example of my spy chart that I use so for example this is a spy chart that I use uh, for trading the weekly options and I've got the conditional colored candles and I'm not going to give you my whole configuration there but you can see I've still got some other indicators on the chart but when I see these high probability trends I know that I should be you know taking partial exits um, especially if certain other things occur in a downtrend for example I knew that these pop-ups on the dark green up in here since the trend was down I was watching for these dark green candles up in here that showed me high momentum a push back up and that was occurring within the context of other charts that I've got for the for trading the spy so when you get these dark green candles you know you're probably hitting an area of resistance overhead and you can create good opportunities for getting into those short positions when you see those dark green high momentum long candles within the context of a bearish momentum all right so just several different ways in which you can use the conditional colored candles i hope that you have fun playing with them be sure to save your work and if you don't have TC2000, give it a try. There's a link in the description box below this video. Thanks for watching.